why is it that every time that Lenart Pottering or System D does anything remotely good that is completely optional to use, and for those people who do use it, it greatly improves their Linux experience, why is it that there is always at least a couple of people here and there who completely freak out about it? I will never know, but they are not the focus for today's video. Instead, we are focusing on the cool new feature. So right now, if you want to restart your system, there are really two main ways of doing so you're going to use on a day-to-day -day basis. One of them is doing a full hardware power cycle, where you shut down the entire system and then repower it back on and that restarts your operating system. And the second thing is a much softer reboot, where the hardware stays powered on, but the OS shuts down and then restarts back up again. And yes, there are other things in this space like KExec, which you're probably not using outside of a server context, and probably at least five other methods you could classify as a reboot of some description. What if there was a way to keep your kernel running, but then everything above the kernel is what gets restarted? And no, I don't mean shutting down your desktop environment and then reopening it. This is something you've always been able to do. This is nothing special whatsoever. What I mean is reloading everything down to your init system. What I mean by this is reloading your entire user space. This is something now being worked on as described by Lena over on his Mastodon. Here's a fun new feature we are working on in System D, user space only reboot. In order to reduce gray out times on image-based OS updates to next to nothing, we are making a reboot happen where kernel stays as it is, but user space shuts down as usual, then possibly transitions into a new root FS and starts up again with an initial transaction as it would on a classic system boot. During the transition, selected services can pass along file descriptors and listening sockets to pass live resources from the old system to the new system. This means super fast switching from one OS version to the next with all service code restarted cleanly and comprehensively, but with selected resources passed through untouched so they can continue to operate and it wasn't even that hard to implement. Or in other words, let's not wait for hardware, firmware, bootloader, kernel, init RD to reinitialize on a reboot. Let's just focus on user space alone. Now, for reasons that should be obvious, this is not suitable for every single situation. Let's say, for example, you're running kernel 6.2, and the update you install comes with kernel 6.3. If you're doing user space reboots, you are still going to be running kernel 6.2 after doing this reboot. This means you're now running an out-of-date kernel. This can be addressed by doing live kernel patching, which you'll commonly see done in a server context, but on the desktop side, it's just way too much hassle to do that. Really, you only want to be doing this on a system that needs to be online all the time. In other cases, doing a proper reboot is just easier. Also, if you've had this kernel update and you try to install a new kernel module, the kernel module is going to be linked against the new version of the kernel, not the old version you're still running. So without doing a proper reboot or fixing up the modules manually, you're not going to be able to use those new modules without doing a proper reboot. You can get around it, but doing a proper reboot is just easier. However, if having a slightly out-of-date kernel isn't that big of a deal, you don't plan to install any new kernel modules, and you're probably going to, you know, turn the system off at the end of the day anyway, you just wanted to get the system update done and then get back to working. In that case, this does actually have a lot of value. Also, Theoretically, because it is passing along these resources, theoretically, if you are running a web server, for example, and you did a user space reboot, everything then just starts back up again, and the server can continue off basically as if nothing had happened. Now, we're very early on, and how viable that is in the real world sort of waits to be seen with a lot of testing, but... 
If it can be done, that's really cool. If it can't be done, just having the ability to do quicker updates, that by itself is already beneficial enough. And alongside this post on Mastodon, Pottering expands further upon the feature on the GitHub pull request. PID1, adding new method of rebooting, user space only, under the name Renew. Use case. This is an extremely quick way to reset user space fully when updating image-based systems without going through a full hardware firmware bootloader kernel reset. It minimizes gray out time for OS updates, in particular when combined with kernel live patching. He is fully aware of that issue being there. I don't know how much image-based systems are really going to try to address that. I guess it depends on how popular this feature ends up actually being. Now, while it does work in the cases that Pottering has tested, this is not ready for merging yet, lacks all documentation and tests, but is pretty comprehensive otherwise, can do a supercharged reboot in an nspawn container and in QEMU in no time. But guys, here's the fun thing about GitHub. Most of the thread, they're not being mean, that's not where the mean people are, they're over on Reddit and other places like that, most of the thread is not focused about the functionality of the feature itself. It's not focused on testing or anything like that. What it's focused on is the name. I'd really call this just user space reboot. Renew is really confusing if you don't already know what it does. And Pottering responds in Pottering fashion. System CTL user space dash reboot is impossible to type. That's why God invented bash completion. To be honest, I don't think this is that bad. There are already commands in systemctl that are worse than this, and there are plenty of other commands you're going to use on a fairly regular basis that are also pretty easy to write as well. It's not using some weird esoteric options or anything like that. It is simply systemctl user space reboot. It is the program and what it does. I would say that's a pretty easy command to remember and pretty easy to type as well. And look, if you don't like it and you use it on a regular basis, you're probably going to make an alias for it anyway. If I was going to alias this, I'd probably get rid of all of systemctl here, get rid of all of this, and maybe get rid of the rest of this. So basically, the alias would look something like so. I reckon that works. And another suggestion as a shorthand is how about systemctl uexec? This would pair well with kexec. This, I think, makes sense if you know about kexec and use kexec on a regular basis. If you don't know about kexec, this just seems like a random assortment of letters for no reason whatsoever. Another one is how about reinit? I agree with Aura here, this sounds a bit too much like a full on reboot. And I agree that user space reboot is probably fine as well. But we don't stop there. How about system reexec? This sort of has the same problems as reinit. Honestly, I think the best name here is just go and use user space reboot. But in the end, it doesn't actually matter. Because no matter what the command is called, what you're going to do is either go to the documentation and look up how to do a user space reboot or far more likely is go onto Google and type Linux how to restart user space. Or if you know about systemd, systemd how to restart user space. You're not going to think about what the command is called. You're just going to run the command. It does the thing. And that's all that matters. Now, while it's new for Pottering to be working on this in systemd, the idea of a user space only reboot is by no means a new concept. A couple of people here and there have been asking about whether this is or is not possible. Reboot only user space from two years and seven months ago. Is it possible to restart only the user space, like shut down everything up to the kernel and then restart from PID1? I would like to snapshot my root butterfest system and quickly boot on that snapshot. And maybe this person knew about it, but at the time, macOS already had that feature in launch CTO with reboot user space. This is a great command name and systemd should just copy it. It's perfectly fine. But it also exists in an open system as well. That being 
free BSD. This is the man page for the reboot command, and if we go down to reboot R, the system kills all processors, unmounts all file systems, mounts the new root file system, and begins the usual startup sequence. After changing vfs.root.mount from with kmf, reboot R can be used to change the root file system while preserving kernel state. This requires the tempfs kernel module to be loaded because init needs a place to store itself after the old root is unmounted, but before the new root is in place. It's not exactly the same, but it is relatively similar. Also, it has existed on Linux in the past as well, that being with sysv init. This is tell init change sysv run level, and if we go down to one right here, change into system rescue mode this is translated into an activation request for rescue.target and is equivalent to system ctl rescue and then after that you change it back to state 5 and it effectively does the same thing the problem is basically nobody uses sysv init anymore so you know <laughs> it doesn't really matter if it exists in this project but the issue with this method is it doesn't retain things like file descriptors, so it's not exactly the same either. Being able to retain that information with the systemd method is incredibly useful. But I do have one concern, and that's not with the feature itself, that's with other people. Because I know a lot of people out there will give really bad advice. You know, Linux doesn't ever need to be rebooted. You can just keep updating the system and keep it going, and it's perfectly fine. Don't do that. It's a really bad idea. Most of your system is not actually going to be updated. But there are going to be people that are saying, ah, oh, you can now just do a system update and just reboot your user space, and everything is updated. And yes, most things will be updated, except the kernel. So any of those, you know, security patches, security features, those are not going to be brought in. So, you know, keep a system running for six months, a year, and now you've got this really weird half outdated system that should not be run. This doesn't replace a regular reboot. It just lives alongside of it in those cases where it makes more sense just to reboot your user space. And for that, I think this is really cool. But hey, let me know your thoughts. Is this a feature that you'd actually care about? Do you think this is just like an extra thing that's neat for some people but you're not going to use? Or do you think it's just a giant waste of time and there is no reason why you'd ever want to reboot your user space? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Silly Bear, Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and Lenart Pottering, you make some great software.